Okay, State of the Game, August 2023. I basically read this through very briefly, and then I started to see like a big uproar going off on Reddit, and then all of a sudden, Some Ordinary Gamers covers this as well, so now I am really curious as to what I might have missed. And when I read through this again, I finally understood what I missed, and I understand why everyone got really angry about it. But before I go into the State of the Game, I just want to say that I do appreciate the fact that some of the devs do this, so again, thank you to Joe for making a State of the Game. It's always nice to see a games director or a games developer come out with something like this, and just just give you an insight on what's going on behind the scenes. But with that being said, they really should have gone through this better. And of course, if you want to read the entire thing yourself, if you haven't already, it's going to be in the description below. I'm just going to pick out some bits that I really am not happy with. And bizarrely enough, I'm starting with PvP, despite the fact that I am a massive PvE player. Because whilst I spend maybe 90% of my time in PvE activities and barely any time in the Crucible, I'm pretty much annoyed for the PvP fan base at this point, because this update just seems pathetic. Just to summarise the first paragraph, he goes over about thanking the hardworking mobile teams for the additional that they've had over the past few seasons in PvP. Now, I'm going to break this down very quickly. The competitive division is just elimination with a fresh coat of paint. Multiple new game modes, I'm pretty sure there's only been a couple across the past few seasons. A revamp to the Trials of Osiris, you still haven't got that down properly, and not only that, you tweak it every season anyway, so it's not really a revamp if it's not completed. New competitive and Trials rewards, that is just reprised old armor that you brought back from previous seasons. It is not new. The most new thing you have managed to do is make one new weapon every season. That is pretty much it. But the one good thing they do mention is PvP specific weapon tuning, Ever since they did the PvE and the PvP split when it comes to tuning the weapons, that was probably like the best decision they've made in the past few seasons because it was always going to be a mess if you were changing values that just affected the weapon in general. If you have the two sets either side, you can basically just tune it in the different sandboxes, which is ideal for what you want. But the fact that guns are still somehow tied to FPS still astonishes me to this day. I don't know how the hell you managed to code a game where FPS actually affects damage and damage received. But wait right there, they're actually going to bring this revolutionary change to PvP this month. What are they going to do, you ask? They are going to bring a new map in. Wait, we've finally got a new map for PvP. It's a Vex map. That is pretty much all you get in there. <laughs> As long as you haven't made the map as big as Disjunction, then it should be okay. It needs to be a close quarters map, kind of how like the Mars maps play out, because this is actually based on Mars anyway. Makes sense for it to be a small and constricted map. So if you've done that, fine, this will work nicely. But if that wasn't enough to excite you, we are going to have a new game mode, and it's called Relic. And Relic is literally a 6v6 where you basically just play normal Crucible, and when you've got enough kills, you can then use these relics, which you can then score points with. How that is going to work is a mystery to me, and I think it's going to be hell when it comes out. If it was just a straight up deathmatch where you're just using relics, that would be fun. But the fact that you've got to charge your weapons with normal kills first, that's where I'm a bit iffy about. But there is also another game mode called Checkmate, which is basically gunplay focus, which I think the community has been asking for for a while. Whether that ends up being a success or not, only time will tell. But guess what? In Season 23, you're getting another map. It's just rehashed from the old stuff. So if you like the Citadel, then you're going to like it again, I suppose, because that's coming out in Season 23. Then they finally have the goal to talk about Vanguard playlist, and they say that it's in a solid place with healthy population. Yeah, because it's the only game mode that's bearable. That's pretty much the truth of it. But they're going to be putting in Vanguard medals to assist in earning score. To be honest, not the worst update in the world, and... I don't know if it'll work or not, but we'll wait and see. But they're also saying they're putting the team's resources into making more varied and frequent seasonal activities, such as Battlegrounds. Enough with Battlegrounds! We don't need any more. Give us unique content that stands out. Deep Dives was a good approach. Try doing something like that again. And if you're concerned about maps being added to the Vanguard operations pool, I'm pretty sure nobody is going to complain if you just do a two-phase deep dive and have that as a strike. Like, that is fine as a strike. It's time for the neglected gambit, and they pretty much admit that they've been very quiet. You don't say. We know you've been quiet. But they say they've been quiet since last year's overhaul. I'm sorry, last year was not an overhaul. Last year was an update. That is all that was. The only things that are actually different is some of the things that I said here. So the primeval tuning. Specifically, what they mean by that is the actual damage phases of it. So it's now split into three phases. You can't just rush the boss anymore, which is a good update because it actually stopped people from rushing the boss and killing it in seconds. Invasions, there was not a significant change for this. It's still pretty much the same. Ammo economy, that literally is just more heavy ammo chests, which I mean, it's better because that means you can get it over with quicker. But when they say core activity fundamentals, that's another way to say, yeah, we just wanted to pad out the list to make it five categories. And the fact that they're throwing rewards on the end of it, the way you changed the rewards was you updated the vendor to reflect what Shax and Zavala were. That's not an overhaul. And not only that, Gambit was again one of the vendors that came in last when it came to the focusing engrams. So again, you're just porting the same system over. Don't pretend it's a big update. But speaking of porting, they're actually going to port the Cathedral of Scars map. Why? <laughs> 
Why not just make a new map for Gambit? You do a map for PvP, makes sense you make a new map for Gambit. If there's anything I want you to be, Bungie, it's consistent, and that is something you continuously seem to fail at. I don't know how you do it, to be honest. And then we go to Armor Set Rewards, and this is where they really drop the ball. Because I'm going to be honest, I didn't notice this, and I don't frankly care, because every time they release an Armor Set for the Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit, it always looks awful. I mean, it must be so hard for the Bungie devs. Like, there's only two of them that actually work at Bungie, and one of them has to come off holiday to do this. So when he makes this one armor set and reshades it three times, he's burned out for the rest of the year. But on the bright side, at least the Titan armor for Trials looks okay. Uh, like, it's not blowing me away because we've had fur armor before, and the bear helmet is pretty cool, but apart from that, it's very standard armor. When I see armor like this, I really just wish that Bungie would just take the ball by the horns and make something completely off the walls and crazy. Take, for example, the Season of Solstice armor from like three years ago, where the glow is just ridiculous. Or even take the latest armor from Season of the Deep, where it's pretty much all floral. Like, that was pretty cool. And even though I'm not a fan of the Ruin Nightmares armor, yes, even the Ruin Nightmares armor was fairly decent. Like, literally just crazy stuff like that would be nice in the game. Don't stick to standard, push the boundaries and actually make something interesting. Summarizing game security, Battle Eye isn't doing its job, Bungie are looking into it, and they basically just said, if someone is on your account and they cheat on your account, you are technically a cheater. Not exactly true, but in the eyes of Bungie, makes sense. And here's a nice little section on stability issues, and I'm not going to talk about any of this, because quite honestly, it's just pointless to read it out, and they just say that they're working on it, is the gist of it. But I just want to point something out very quickly. When we had server issues for literally months on end where people were getting disconnected left, right, and center, and the game was laggy, unbearable, and they had to tone down how many people could go into the tower, it took them literally months to do something about that. But when the Eververse store became a little bit laggy, it got fixed in a week. It's pretty clear where your priorities are, Bungie, so don't try to feed us useless spiel, just fix the game. Seasonal structure. Basically, I said they're working hard behind the scenes to shake up the paradigm and to subvert player expectations. Magical word, player expectations. Stop with saying this. It always makes you look bad. And when I start hearing the Reddit mods are actually removing comments from the Destiny 2 Reddit just because someone has something negative to say about what Joe said here, that's when I start drawing the line of you are getting so deluded you just believe you're in hype. And this season was literally nothing different. Whilst I will agree I like deep dives and how it was structured, it needed to be done better and it definitely wasn't balanced. In terms of your narrative that you're spinning, it was garbage. The only decent bit was the ending. Like, I'm not... I'm not even trying to say that in a bad way. I literally just mean the fact that Sloane said that the Witch Queen must rise is enough to get me hyped for the next season. Do that more often. But you need to put more time in the actual story of what Sloane's been doing and how she's actually been coping with it all. Because just having the occasional talk with Drifter and the occasional talk with Saladin is nowhere near enough. And not only that, you missed out on a huge trick in Season of the Deep. You could have literally made Sloane the end boss of it and it would have been spectacular and a good way to finish the season off. But what you've done instead is make a massive plot hole in your entire narrative by leaving Sloane alive while she's taken with the light. So what's going to happen to her now? In like three, four seasons, is she magically going to be better? And the fact that you managed to do this despite the amount of backlash they had when it came to revealing what the veil was i'm surprised that they still did this but finally i can take a break from having a rant so i'm just going to calm down very nicely because they finally announced a change in season 22 that the community has been begging for for literally years and that is the fact that you can finally favorite cosmetic stuff so Apparently this is going to be for shaders, ornaments, and emotes, and you can have a total of 100 favorited across the board. Looking at the image here, it does seem like it's going to be split out into 10s, so it's going to be 10 for each armor pieces when it comes to your shaders. I imagine ornaments might count for this as well. Keeping with the calm and cool collective, Stasis is finally getting moved over into being basically what the Strand was. So instead of you doing all the quests and basically going to LC Bray numerous times just to get an aspect or a fragment, you can now just buy them for Glimmer. Thank you for finally incorporating this two years later. <laughs> Transnat will now be on locks. Again, I'm going to try and keep a cool head with this one because this should have been the case from the start. And I thought this was changed like silently because every single Transmat that I've gotten recently has been unlockable. It's not been consumable. But not only that, and I do appreciate the fact that they've done this and it probably means that the old ones have been transferred into being unlockable rather than consumable. The problem I have with this is why is this a thing that was worked on when you have much bigger issues in the sandbox? Makes no logical sense to me why this was worked on. Which ender quest has been changed, so instead of having three discs that you've got to charge, which is a bit sad to be honest, it's now just a single quest. Meaning the quest is probably going to be longer and you have to charge the discs one by one, so... That's going to be fun to cover. I'll do risk and reward on that when I get around to it. Still remaining calm, they've made a somewhat decent change again. 
and they basically added the resources tab into collections, which it doesn't show you how much of the resources stored, but it tells you where to get the resources from, which if you are a consistent player of Destiny, then it's not going to be an issue. You know where to get everything when you want to go for it. But when you are a returning player and you've been out of the game for multiple seasons, this is going to be incredibly helpful. Or even to new players when they might not be sure where certain items are, this is going to be incredibly helpful to educate them and find out where to get the things they need. A quick note on Iron Banner for Season 22 though, they now have two different stacking challenges. So one stacking challenge is going to be specifically for your multiplier, the other one is going to be for your pinnacle rewards. The issue I have with this is why do you require us to use seasonal subclasses anyway? In PvP, surely you should encourage players to play the builds that they want to use, not force them into using something they might not want to use. So why you couldn't just turn off the seasonal subclasses and just leave it as that? I will never know. Ritual rank ups immediately. Uh, just to summarize, instead of waiting to get the flashy new rank up menu when you get your Valor, Glory or Infamy up, um, you basically have to go back to orbit to see the stream. It now happens straight away. Why is this a priority? I will never understand, but Bungie works in mysterious ways, I suppose. On the bright side, we're going to get three new aspects in Season 22 for Strand, which is Whirling Maelstrom, Banner of War, and Weave Walk. New weapon subfamilies incoming. Uh, why? Why do we need more weapon subfamilies? Makes no sense. Like, not being funny, you struggle to make new weapons. Why would you make it even harder for yourselves by making another subfamily? Reinforcing our goals for the year. Ah, uh, I'm gonna have some gripe with this one. Number one, expanding players' imaginations. So, I'm taking this with a massive pinch of salt because I'm going to disregard Lightfall and Season of the Defiance, which ironically is the one they've named. Season of the Deep is actually very adventurous. I like the fact that they were pushing the boat out with this. Even though it was on Titan, which is an old map, they changed the entire layout of it, and we spent most of our time underwater anyway. So even though it was an old map, it felt like an entirely new one, which was a really good twist on it. And like I said in a previous video when I was reviewing Season of the Deep, I had a lot of mystery when I was walking around with it, and it felt nice to just be engaged with the game again. But when it comes to Lightfall and Season of the Defiance, I'm sorry, no dice. You completely scuffed them up. I'm not even joking, Season of the Defiance felt like a massive fetch quest. That was literally it. Next bit, bring challenge back to Destiny. I'll be brutally honest right now, you have not done this well. But according to genuine feedback, we achieved this goal after making additional tweaks. No, you pissed off the community quite badly, actually. And not only that, when people bring up the negativity, you just delete the post. It seems like YouTube is the only safe place to do it now because that way you can't have a moderator delete your video. And ever since the community managers and devs went into hiding on Twitter, there's no one you can really talk to anymore. So it's pretty clear how Bungie's stance is on all this. And that stance is literally that they don't care anymore. Probably the name of this video. I don't know yet. But hey, at least they're not raising the power cap for season 22, even though they're pushing the raid back a week. I'm still baffled why they've made that decision. And it's very fitting that you've left this image here as well, because it's arguably your worst exotic mission you've ever created. Enriching the content. Based on feedback throughout the year of the Witch Queen, where's the feedback from this year? This You should be working on current feedback, not feedback way back when. But they are saying we wanted more exotic missions, which we did, because most of the time your exotic missions were good. Because let's be honest, they've been pretty solid when it comes to exotic missions. The Presage was still one of the top tier ones in my eyes. And then later down the line, Operation Seraph Shield, absolutely brilliant. But then you drop the ball with the new one. So I don't know what to think anymore. Like Avalon's still really good as well. I know that's a very recent one. But this season is just dreadful. Never put an exotic mission within a activity again. Make it its own separate entity. Leave it like that. That's how we like it. But they talk about the exotic mission rotator and that they're going to be making the Dead Man's Tale craftable. Which is interesting, but also makes sense because it was one of the first exotics to have a changing perk on it. And then they mentioned something about this Pathfinder UI. Um, it's apparently going to replace core ritual bounties. So think like Vanguard Operation Bounties, Crucible Bounties, Gambit Bounties. I can kind of see why you want to get rid of them, but... I don't understand what this is meant to mean, because the point of doing bounties was to raise your seasonal level so you can actually get more power on your artifacts, as well as unlock rewards on the season pass. But what am I meant to be looking at here? Because it just looks like a bunch of nodes leading to a singular engram. So are you trying to tell me that we've got to do a bunch of different things for one engram here? Or are there going to be multiple challenges that increase our rewards? But hey, this could be something really good, so I'm not going to bash it too much. I'm just annoyed at how vague they've left this. They could have at least given us a bit of information of what we're seeing here. But perhaps I'm a bit too hurtful about things like that. Connect our guardians. Okay, your features that you added in Lightfall were practically non-existent. So when you're saying it's the most welcoming for new players and returning players, you are talking nonsense, I'm afraid. The game has not changed when it comes to new players. It is still the same game that it has always been since Witch Queen. And what I mean by that is you literally still start the game up and you are handheld for a quest line with sure hand. And you eventually go to the tower where you meet Zavala and then you just run along and do some bunch of quests and go into the game. 
He has been that way for literally years. So when you're saying it's more welcoming for new and returning players, I have no idea what you're talking about. And finally, they leave a note that the Fireteam Finder is going to pretty much be postponed until Season 23. A shame, really, because this could have really done with coming out this season to be tweaked for Season 23. So when the final shape comes out, it's ready and it's not going to mess up anything. But I'm not a game dev. I don't know how any of this works. But still, that is my take on the state of the game article that Joe's very kindly wrote out. You're talking a lot of nonsense. You clearly don't listen to community feedback. And you are only going to cater to the top 1% and it's never going to change. So coming from a player that used to play the game for 100 hours a week, going down to what, I think... I played four hours this week, if that. If you want to keep us around and not having a return as returning players, maybe you should actually invest some proper time into developing the game that you're saying you're doing. But anyway, that is at the end of the video. Thank you for listening to me rant. I don't know how long this is going to be. So if it's above 20 minutes, I apologize. But if you enjoyed it for some godforsaken reason, then feel free to leave a like down below and a comment as well telling me what we think about this travesty of whatever Joe's posted. And then we can just go and have a happy day after we've done that. And as always, I shall see you all in the next video.